Our guest this week is a pin-up for a generation who hate pin-ups. She's Australia's number one feminist. Sorry, that's wrong. She's Australia's one feminist. It's the iconic and marvellous Jermaine Greer. The most famous feminist of the last 100 years. International best-selling writer of the female eunuch. Author of dozens of published intellectual works. Actually wanted to have sex with Martin Amis. Jermaine Greer. Yes, it's Jermaine Greer. What a pleasure to have you here in the News Thing studio, Jermaine. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for asking me. Uh, you've always courted controversy, of course, throughout your career. Uh, you got in trouble, Greg, and recently, didn't you, for your comments on transgender people. Uh, for our viewers who didn't hear the quote, she said, just because you lop off your dick and then wear a dress doesn't make you a fucking woman. And you got a right kick in from the angry mob on Twitter, didn't you? They're a bunch of dickheads, aren't they? I really have no idea. I don't have anything to do with Twitter. Don't you? And that was... So you you rewrote what that. I said, which I, got, I thought I, made it rather better. OK, what, where, what bits did I get wrong? Is that the gist of it? Uh, I think I actually said, just because, just because you get your cock off doesn't mean you turn into a woman. <laughs> Fair enough. A, a bit more yeah. concise, you might say. You yeah. don't have to wear yeah. a dress. Uh, we met, whoever did this made it more lyrical, but either way, we <laughs> get the point. Um... There was controversy. A lot of it was on social media, but you don't engage with that at all. You don't see that, no? Well, except that. I mean, I've been attacked by um, people supporting what they imagine is the transgender cause, which I don't think is really, mm. um, all over the place. There was all the silliness in Cardiff. Um, there were people shouting at me in Oxford who appeared to be accusing me of causing murders in Brazil. Right. Which made people... me feel like chaos theory. My butterfly took off yep. and, gee, somebody died in Brazil. People extrapolate very quickly uh, now and things, sort of thoughts and ideas and accusations kind of spiral out of control. What's that Churchill quote where he says, you know, a lie can travel halfway around the world before the truth has even got its trousers on? Mm -hmm. Is that the right quote? That, that happens super fast now. Does that bother you? Um, the internet's kind of weird because it's a vomitorium and most of the people who cough up their gizzards in fury uh, don't even bother to get their facts right. I mean, somebody threw things at me in Wellington, this happened, claiming that I had caused a transsexual, I doubted a transsexual and caused her to lose her job. The person who lost her job was me. I mean, they had it all <laughs> upside down and I'd never outed anybody. And it's had a terrible effect on my life, really. I lost my college, I lost my students, who meant a huge amount to me. Um, but that's how it finished. And, in fact, it's probably not over yet. All of which has been misunderstood, even by people who were there and should have known better. Would the 1970s Jermaine Greer have uh, taken the same point of view and said the same things about that particular issue as, as the 2015 Jermaine? I think so, because, I mean, when I wrote The Female Eunuch, I was trying to point out that femininity was a cultural concept mm. and masculinity was learnt, mm. and learnt with some effort by young men, um, and that, really, they're both artificial, that in the mid... It's, we all live in the middle, where yeah. all people are not quite male enough, not quite female enough, so we put on an act and we, you know... We copy our dad, we walk like <laughs> our dad. But anyway, uh, that was my feeling was that we didn't have two hi highly contrasted sexes. To me, it's very strange that a 42-year-old man, the average age of gender reassignment is 42, mm. who's been married, means he's had the unpaid services of a wife mm. and his fathered children. He gets to middle age and he says, I've been a woman the whole time. Well, my offence is to say, I don't believe you. I think you're wrong. You call bullshit. Well, I could say bullshit, but it would just be the same thing. Uh, listen, it, there's a lot of young guys who work in our office on the team on the show here, right? Mm -hmm. And they like to consider themselves uh, liberal guys, and yet they are confused about what constitutes being liberal or constitutes having feminist attitudes, and a lot of them worry about they might be kind of sexist without noticing it. So we thought whilst you were here, you might be able to help some of them out with their day-to-day -day dilemmas. So we're going to play this little game. Help me, Jermaine. I think I'm a sexist. 
Yeah, there we have it. Help me, Jermaine. I think I might be a sexist. Some of the young lads, they do get very confused about how to conduct themselves around women. Uh, we've got some of them here with their questions which they would like you to answer. Let's hear the first. I was on the bus. Uh, there was a woman. At least I think she was a woman. Aged about 48. I offered her my seat. Does that make me sexist? No. I'm interested that you thought she was aged about 48. It's almost as if he counted the rings as if she was a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a very specific guess he made, isn't it? They're eccentric people, these young men. No, but the interesting thing is, you offer your seat to someone who's, have di who's having difficulty standing. Mm. It doesn't matter what sex they are. There you go. Uh, let's take the second dilemma. This is from young Josh. I don't find female bodybuilders attractive unless they wear high heels, like they sometimes do in bodybuilding competitions. Does that make me sexist? Mm. He doesn't like female bodybuilders. He doesn't find them attractive unless they're in heels. I don't either. Mm. I don't find them attractive at all. No, nor do Does I. Does that make me a sexist? I don't know. If you don't know, then we're all screwed. I don't <laughs> think I find bo bodybuilders attractive. It makes me think of the craze. It makes me kind of nervous. <laughs> he, the point is, Josh is confused. He thinks that it makes him sexist to not find that kind of physical form attractive. As if he thinks it's masculine and therefore unless unattractive. Unless they're wearing high heels. Mm, yeah. I think he's got a bigger problem in that he's a shoe fetishist. Yeah, quite right. <laughs> OK, lastly, here we've got Paddy. I love horror films, but I can't watch horror films with women in them because I don't find women scary. I like horror films where there are women topless in them, but they're still not scary. Does that make me sexist? <laughs> Who was it who had a nightmare that a woman had eyes instead of nipples? Oh, my God. I think it was Shelley, and he woke up screaming. I tell you what, that doesn't sound like a nightmare to me. It sounds deeply arousing. Oh, really? Mm. You want to be looked at? Yeah, by a pair of breasts. <laughs> I don't know why, Jermaine. Who knows why we all have these different tastes. Jermaine Greer, that's all we've got time for. Thank you ever so much for joining us here. Real honour to meet you and talk to you.